What I wanted to do to conclude this class, because this is the last class in our Zuktin series, our advanced part of the curriculum, and so I wanted to recap a little bit and make a few comments and read a few from some other people that are far superior to myself in terms of understanding these things uh, to kind of help you out. So I thought I would start with the lesser, those of myself, uh, in my advice in terms of these practices, focusing primarily on Trekcho and Togao. Uh, the first thing that came to mind were the different series. Uh, so we had the mind series, the space series, and we had the Upadesha series. So in the mind series, everything is the nature of mind, which is Rigpa, uh, pure awareness. In the space series, emptiness transcends what we typically use as a description for emptiness, the lack of inherent existence. and it is more like space, uh, but it's not just nothing. Okay, And then in the special instruction series, uh, we have what are essentially the three statements of Garib Dorje, I think, are particularly appropriate. Uh, first, you have the introduction to your own nature of Rigpa. And then we have continue the confidence in our experience Rigpa. So we got introduced and then we want to experience that. And then we have, we continue with confidence. So we've developed confidence. So we continue in that confidence in Rigpa. The most important practice in Trek Cho is Guru Yoga. And so Guru Yoga, where we merge our mind with that of the Guru, which is none other than Rigpa or Buddha nature. Uh, so that is really the key in terms of the practice. Uh, bliss and non-conceptuality and clarity tend to come and go. So we don't want to get attached to those things in any way. And so we practice letting go and letting be just as it is. So Rigpa always and always, if you will. In terms of Togao, Togao involves a direct seeing of Rigpa. And so we have the, the different visions. So the first vision, we have basically the direct perception of Rigpa. So we see Bindus and we see Vajra chains and so forth. And then we have the progress in experience where we see other visions of light. And then consummate awareness, where everything is rainbow light and there's families of deities in union and so forth. And then we go into the fourth vision, which is the extinction into Rigpa. And so everything just dissolves into space, if you will. And we use the poses and the gazes for sky gazing on clear days. And we experience the nature of all phenomena in the same way when we are not sky gazing. Okay, so even maybe the same day, but if we're not in doing the actual practice, just visualizing everything. So when you see colors, uh, you see yellow, so it's Ratna Sambhava, and you see red, it's Amitabha, and those kinds of things, or seeing rainbows, or other kinds, seeing the illusory nature of things. All of those things fit into this. And then on cloudy or cold days, when Togal is just not practical, we can also do Trekcho. So you should always be doing these practices one way or another, both formal practice and between practice sessions. All of it should be included. A better way to say all of that comes from His Holiness Dilgo Kensi Rinpoche. And we had Dzogchen practice in everyday life that we looked at previously. So I selected a few lines of that that kind of summarize some of his advice on that. And first he talks about having a complete carefree acceptance and openness to everything without limit. Openness is the playground of our emotions. We experience everything totally, being present in the moment. We develop a feeling of opening ourselves out completely. And be free and non-conceptual. 
awareness in the primordial state has no basis. So it's non-conceptual, completely. Phenomena are completely clear and lucid. There's nothing to attain or realize. Everything is naturally perfect as it is. Enlightenment is already here. The everyday practice of Dzogchen is just everyday life itself. It should not become a specialized or formal event. Meditation is always ideal. There is no unsatisfactory meditation. Simply sit in your own place, in your own condition, just as it is. Thinking about experiences is simply a distraction. See everyday life as a mandala, the dance or play of the universe. Be natural and spontaneous, accepting and learning from everything. See the ironic and amusing side of events that usually irritate us. That's really good advice. Experience becomes the continuity of nowness, that present moment. Simply plunging directly into meditation in the moment now with our whole being, free from hesitation, boredom, or excitement, is enlightenment. Okay. So I think that's very good advice. I uh, hear from His Holiness Dujam Rinpoche regarding the four visions, a uh, real concise explanation of each. So for the direct perception of reality itself, one directly ascertains the nature of existence of suchness or ultimate truth. This realization corresponds to the first bodhisattva stage and provides one with the confidence of never returning to samsara. Progress in visionary experience, the second vision. All appearances during and after meditation transform into displays of light in rainbow bindus with ever increasing clarity until finally all ordinary appearances vanish and dissolve into continuous omnipresent displays of visions of light. This stage corresponds to the attainment of the fifth bodhisattva stage known as the difficult to purify. Then the third one, reach, reaching consummate awareness, the entire universe appears to be totally pervaded with rainbow light and blazing fire, and everything appears as bindus in which the five families of male and female, peaceful and wrathful, divine embodiments appear in union. This stage of spontaneous manifestation corresponds to the eighth bodhisattva stage known as immovable. And finally, the fourth vision is extinction into reality itself. All phenomena indescribably dissolve into absolute space. This stage corresponds to attainment of the supreme stage of the spontaneously present Vidyadhara on the mantra path, which surpasses the tenth bodhisattva stage known as the cloud of Dharma. So this is enlightenment itself. Here are some things, advice from uh, Dongsar Kinsey Rinpoche, uh, labeled experiences. Uh, nam, nyam in Tibetan means experiences. And so he talks about three varieties of experiences that I also mentioned in my statements there. Uh, sometimes we have the experience that is blissful. We can just accept anything and everything, no matter what happens, everything just seems to be right. There's complete acceptance and a great deal of bliss. Another kind of experience is non-conceptuality. It may go on for just a few minutes or hours or sometimes even days. There's no thoughts, no aggression, no obvious passion, no judgmental attitudes, no comparison, no insecurity, yet everything will appear to be vividly present. And the third one is clarity. Everything manifests with crystal clarity. And so then he kind of summarizes and talks about the great masters of the past have told us that nyam is like mist, sooner or later it will dissolve. These experiences are not our final destination. Be prepared to give all this up. It is the secret guru, emptiness, 
that we must discover within our own awareness. Let our Buddha nature grow. Um, inevitably, we are preoccupied with other things. Nonetheless, though we constantly busy ourselves with this and that, our Buddha natures remain vibrant. So you can get to the point where the Buddha nature is always present, no matter what you're doing, if you're talking, you're reading, you're eating, uh, anything else that you happen to be doing, you can still sense that Buddha nature or Rikpa. And then one of my very favorites, and this isn't so specifically related to uh, Dzogchen per se, uh, but I think is always really, really good advice, especially for those of us who somehow or other wound up with titles. Um, but uh, I, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but certainly some parts of this, I think it's also helpful advice for all of us on the path. And this is Patrol Rinpoche's advice to myself, from me to myself. Listen up, old bad karma patrol, you dweller in distraction. For ages now you've been beguiled, entranced, and fooled by appearances. Are you aware of that? Are you? Right this very instant, when you're under the spell of mistaken perception, you've got to watch out. Don't let yourself get carried away by this fake and empty life. Your mind is spinning around and carrying out lots of useless projects. It's a waste. Give it up. Thinking about the hundred plans you want to accomplish with never enough time to finish them just weighs down your mind. You're completely distracted by all these projects which never come to an end. But keep spreading out more like ripples in water. Don't be a fool. For once, just sit tight. Listen to the teachings. You've already heard hundreds of teachings, but when you haven't grasped the meaning of even one teaching, what's the point of listening to more? Reflecting on the teachings, even though you've listened, if the teachings aren't coming to, to mind when needed, what's the point of more reflection? None. Meditating according to the teachings. If your meditation practice still isn't curing the obstructing states of mind, forget about it. You've added just up how many mantras you've done, but you aren't accomplishing the Kyrian visualization. You may get the forms of deities nice and clear, but, you, but you're not putting an end to the subject and object. You may tame what appear to be evil spirits and ghosts, but you're not training the stream of your own mind. Your four fine sessions of sadhana practice, so meticulously arranged, forget about them. When you're in a good mood, your practice seems to have lots of clarity, but you just can't relax into it. When you're depressed, your practice is stable enough, but there's no brilliance to it. As for awareness, you try to force yourself into a Rigpa-like state, as if stabbing a stake into a target. When those yogic positions and gazes keep your mind stable only by keeping, their, keeping mind tethered, forget about them. Giving high-sounding lectures doesn't do your mind stream any good. The path of analytical reasoning is precise and acute. It is just more delusion. Good for nothing, go ship. The oral instructions are very profound, but not if you don't put them into practice. Reading over and over those Dharma texts that just occupy your mind and make your eyes sore, forget about it. You beat your little Dharma drum, ting, ting, and your audience thinks it's charming to hear. You're reciting words about offering up your body, but you still haven't stopped holding it dear. You're making your little symbols go cling, cling, without keeping the ultimate purpose in mind. All this Dharma practice equipment that seems so attractive, forget about it. Right now, those students are all studying so very hard, but in the end, they can't keep it up. Today, they seem to get the idea, but later on, there's not a trace left. Even if one of them manages to learn a little, he rarely applies his learning to his own conduct. Those elegant Dharma disciples, forget about them. And then skipping on down a little ways. In the triple universe, when you're lower than your company, you should take the low seat. Should you happen to be the superior one, don't get arrogant. 
There's no absolute need to have close friends. You're better off just keeping to yourself. When you're without any worldly or religious obligations, don't keep on longing to acquire some. If you let go of everything, 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 that is the real point. So some pretty good advice from somebody who is a far superior master to uh, most all of us, I would suspect.